Thailand's new controversial constitution. Critics say it grants the military huge and unchecked powers. The military argues it puts the country on a path back to democracy. So is Thailand heading towards stability or further uncertainty? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Fuli Batibo. It's been two years since the Thai military overthrew Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawat, a move it said was necessary to restore stability after years of political uncertainty. But since then, Thailand's military rulers have been accused of rolling back democracy. Well, they've now unveiled the final draft of a controversial new constitution that many argue will enshrine the military's powers. Thais will get to decide for themselves when they vote on the draft in a referendum in August. Lots for us to discuss today on Inside Story, but first, Al Jazeera's Scott Heidler sets up our story. It's an unusual job for military reservists. Fanning out across the nation by the thousands assigned to inform the Thai public about a draft constitution and a roadmap returning the country to democracy. But what's been playing out in Thai politics these last two years since the army took over is something familiar. 2014 was the 13th successful coup in Thailand, and if voted in, this will be the nation's 20th constitution. But some feel this version is designed to further entrench the existing power brokers. We call this term like deep state. They try to um, um, strengthen their own power more compared to the last um, constitution. And then um, that's why they, they try to enhance their own grips on the um, senators. He added that those in control want to get further away from elections. The draft constitution calls for the entire 200-member upper house to be appointed by a committee. Previously, they were voted into office through general elections. For centuries, agriculture has been a large part of Thai culture, and it plays a big role in politics. Here in the Pineapple Heartland, some admit they really don't understand what's in this draft constitution, nor what they'll be voting on in a few months' time. Suchar Tongcham has been working in this field for 40 years. He'd like a return to a civilian government. I am concerned as I don't know anything about this draft charter. Honestly, I don't like the military. I wish we could be freer like other countries. Yet some Thais who need stability to make a living are happy with the military government's draft constitution. Natawood Sisawan has been giving horseback rides on Huahin Beach for 15 years. I will vote yes. We can see that the old charter couldn't solve problems we have in our country, but only caused more conflicts. The government's roadmap puts a general election on the calendar in mid-2017. But there's been no indication what would happen if there's a bump in that road and the public turns down the draft constitution. Scott Heidler, Al Jazeera, Huahin. Well, as Scott mentioned, there have been at least a dozen coups and 20 draft constitutions in Thailand since it became a constitutional monarchy in 1932. The most recent draft calls for the creation of a 200-member unelected Senate with six seats reserved for senior military chiefs. The appointed Senate is seen as a way of countering the powers of elected lawmakers in Parliament. And there's been no criticism of the draft constitution ahead of the announcement. Anyone who does criticize it could face 10 years in jail. Well, let's uh, get the thoughts of our guests now on today's Inside Story. In Bangkok, we have Sunai Pasuk, Senior Researcher on Thailand for Human Rights Watch. In London, Virapat Pariawong, Visiting Scholar at the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. And also in Bangkok, joining us via Skype, Norachit Sinhaseni, Spokesman for the Constitution Drafting Committee. Welcome to you all, gentlemen. Thank you for being on Inside Story. If I may start with you, Norachit Sinhaseni, you were part of the the drafting committee. What was the thinking behind this text? How does this new draft constitution benefit Thailand and the people of Thailand? Well, for the most important part is this new constitution is returning democracy back to the country. But number two, trying to get a cleaner, better democratically elected government, one that 
eliminates corrupt politicians, politicians who think only for themselves and their own group, and those that have put their interests ahead of the country and pushing through uh, legislation based on the majority of the those that are, have been elected, but at the same time disregarding the minority or the views of the people. Mm. So it is a constitution that has been termed one that is against corruption, but still maintaining the rights and the freedom of the people. But Norachid, as you know, almost all of Thailand's political parties from both sides of the political spectrum have condemned this draft constitution, saying that it only cements the military's hold on, on power. What do you respond to that? I think they're referring to the Senate, which will be appointed only in the interim period of five years, where the, those in government are saying that they need this period to ensure stability. and. Appointed Senate is nothing new in Thailand, nor is it unique to Thailand. We've only had a few elections where the Senate are uh, elected, and even in those, sometimes there is criticism that maybe we need appointed senators. But that is beside the point. The point is that the people will be deciding their own future, electing uh, politicians to be in parliament, what comes next, all this fear and, and, mong and, and uh, raising the specter of a continued uh, grasp of power by the military is only in the case where there is a deadlock in parliament. Okay. Again, the members of parliament are still free to choose the, the party that they wish to be in government. Sunai so Pasuk in Bangkok. Uh, Norachit says through this constitution, the people will be deciding their own future. Do you agree with this? Is this your reading of this uh, draft text? The draft constitution doesn't give me any convincing assurance that uh, there will be a genuine transition toward democracy, but instead a prolonged military control of the country, especially through the, the Senate that will be handpicked by the junta. Um, the guidance of, of, of of the government administration and the reform strategy of the country, especially during the five-year transitional period, will be uh, controlled by the Senate. So what's the point that, you know, at that point, the elected parliament and the elected government will have to listen to the Senate with the top branches from top brass from the military sitting on top of it. That is one form of a, a concealed uh, or, or disguised form of military control of the country that will continue and then uh, beyond that if we look at the context of the political environment in the lead up to the referendum mm. there is no room for free expression of dissents and, and disagreements uh, criticism all those are not allowed and then you know as a result of that what we will see is one-sided uh, opinion uh, making through referendum to endorse the draft charter. Okay. That is what we are seeing. So it's not a genuine transition to a democracy. Not a genuine transition, you say. Let's get the thoughts of Verapat in London. The process of drafting this constitution, uh, uh, Verapat, uh, had repeatedly been delayed in the last year. What do you make of this new draft? Is Thailand on the way back to democracy, as uh, Nora Chet in Bangkok says? I certainly agree uh, with the previous two speakers. First, I agree with, with Mr. Norashid that we need to tackle the problems of corruption in Thailand. Um, the, the fact of the matter is um, most people who are in power are corrupt. Um, and There's no exception with the military junta government, which could not answer questions regarding suspicious activities going on with certain projects. The same goes to the politicians from across the aisle. Mm -hmm. The point that I hope to make is that in order to fight corruption, we need the help of the people, the political process that for the people to stand up against corruption. Mm -hmm. However, what I'm, I'm seeing here in this particular draft constitution is the inst installation of um, uh, a special system whereby people are not actually involved in the fight against corruption. Let's take, for example, if we believe in this system of appointed senators, uh, appointed sen senators who are not in any way uh, related to the people, to the electorates, how, how, how do we suppose to 
make the people feel involved in this fight against corruption. So I think in the end, I, I think I share Mr. Norajit's goal that we need to fight corruption, but I think I, I see it differently in the way that we need to empower the people, mm. not the unrepresentative organs. Uh, with regard to um, Kun Sunai's uh, point, uh, I, I, I agree that there is a, 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 se a severe uh, problems going on with the process. Uh, how, how are the people uh, supposed to endorse a constitution when they are uh, living under the climate of fear of uh, having a free debate. Mm. But what really is, is a bigger problem, in my opinion, is that we are actually seeing history repeating itself. This is not the first time, as you rightly pointed out, for us to have military coups and, uh, and a constitution installed uh, afterwards. Uh, if you look at the last example, the 2006 military coup, which led to the 2007 constitution, that constitution created nothing but political conflicts. Mm. Mm. We had half appointed, half elected senators, and the appointed, uh, and the elected uh, lower house tried to amend the constitution, and that basically led to a big, uh, a big conflict that so led to this current so, military so coup. So what then? Let so me just I ask you this. You mentioned 2007. What then is different with this particular constitution from the one in 2007? And what uh, do you see as the main problems? What are your concerns with this particular draft? So the, the, the goal of this current constitution, in, of this current draft, in my opinion, is to finish the unfinished business under the, the 2007 constitution. So to take an example regarding the Senate, under the 2007 constitution, we had half elected, half appointed senators, and which led to political conflicts, uh, the wrestling of arms between unelected um, uh, bodies and the elected governments and the lower house. Now, under the current draft, we are having a fully appointed uh, to 50, uh, 200 senators and interim caretaker for the next five years. So I suppose that it's very likely that we are going to see uh, a stronger level of political conflicts. That's just one example. Okay. Another big, big problem is that we have provisions in this particular con draft constitution, which is very dangerous. For example, the constitution, the current draft envisions that there could be a, a delay, uh, unscheduled delay of elections if there are some sort of necessary um, right. uh, causes of delay. Uh, so that's one, um, and that reminds us again of okay. the delay of the, of the elections that led to this uh, political chaos in the first place. Yes, one of the concerns now is uh, exactly when these elections will happen. Let me bring back Nora Chit in Bangkok. Uh, both of our two other guests, Nora Chit, made uh, the, the concern, raised the concern about the fact that there has been no involvement of the people in the drafting of this constitution and, and also that there have been no debates about this draft constitution. Uh, a majority of Thais have no little, have very little understanding of this text. How is this going to be addressed from now until August 7th on the day of the referendum? How are you going to make sure that people are aware well, what, what they will what be voting for? Well, part of what uh, our term of reference is, is between now and August to let the people uh, be educated or let them be informed of the, the draft. If people had been interested, they could have read the, uh, the first earlier draft and what is now the final draft. I'm sure once the referendum time approaches, mm. there will be additional interest Although they have not been actively participating, there has been an, a conscious effort to go out to the people in every region of the country and talk to them. As Kun Chai, our chair, stated... They have been... We sorry to interrupt you, sir. You say they have not actively been participating, but they haven't even been allowed to criticise this draft. There's a problem right there, isn't it? It's being criticised left and right. Don't you read the papers? Every day. But in public, they're not allowed to, di to, to criticize this draft constitution, from my understanding. Because, uh, again, gatherings are banned under uh, the current military rule. Yes, people just tend to forget what happened two years ago. The people were thanking the military for getting them out of violence on the streets. People forget so easily what happened two years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go back to that situation? Mm -hmm. Does Al Jazeera want to come back and cover riots in Thailand? I don't think so. I hope not. Okay. Sunai, uh, Sunai Pasuk in Bangkok, uh, a necessary correction to the excess of democracy, this draft constitution? And, uh, you know, do you feel that Thais are genuinely interested and are genuinely uh, aware of what they'll be voting for on August 7? Well, actually, what we fear is Thai voters are going to be pressured by the junta to participate in 
the referendum, no matter uh, whether they would like to do that or not. I cannot see how the Thai voters can make an informed decision when a debate about, const about the draft constitution need to be registered. They cannot debate freely and peacefully uh, according to their, to their own will. And as we discussed tonight, um, the Marit Kunda had already announced more than once uh, the Prime Minister himself, the Deputy Prime Minister, and then the Army Chief all spoke in one voice that anyone who criticized the draft constitution can be considered as causing trouble, mm -hmm. can be charged with sedition, they can be taken into military camp for re-education. This is not a message that assures the Thai people that the upcoming referendum for the draft constitution is going to be a free and fair exercise, is this going to be a democratic exercise? No, it is going to be a, a massive orchestration of state power to ensure that the referendum result will be yes, not anything critical of the draft constitution or the plan of the military junta to hold on to power. Verapat Pariyong, do, do you agree with uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Sunai just said there, that this vote is likely not to be free and, and fair because, you know, there hasn't been a free debate about this draft constitution and that people will be pressured into voting yes on August 7th. Do you agree with that? I'm afraid so that is the case, but there are bigger problems. Um, for example, people don't really have the, the choice. What happens if they vote no or if they reject this particular draft? Mm -hmm. uh, nobody has uh, a clear answer. What, what sort of draft are we going to see next? Uh, and I think it's important to go back to Mr. Norashi's point. I think I agree with him that nobody wants there to be chaos on the streets, but I think we have to make it a, a reasonable point that we have to strike a balance. It's not as if that if we allow people to freely debate, there will be suddenly chaos on the streets. And, and let's examine the logic of those who claim that the military repression is necessary to maintain peace and order. There were military officers um, uh, in charge back uh, two years ago when there were protesters shutting down uh, Bangkok streets for six months or more. Uh, where were those generals? Where were they, uh, what were they doing? Mm. And the government back then tried to curb down those protesters through legal means, through the legislation in place. But you know, um, I agree uh, with you that work. I agree with you that for people who believe in strong political parties, that this constitution is a setback but but at the same time for those who dislike politicians and who fear that you know the, the dominance of a successful prime minister like Taksin Shinawatra uh, whose parties have won elections in Thailand for the last 15 years that this constitution is the right answer to that uh, the yellow shirts for instance uh, are very happy with this text so uh, would you say that you know, the, there's a cleavage here that, you know, there are some people who are actually glad that there's a draft constitution that will get rid of all the corruption and, and all that we've seen in Thailand for the last 15 years. Uh, certainly, and I, I think it, it happens in every society that there are different political preference when it comes to politicians. Mm. But that's ex exactly the point. We need the people to be able to debate and decide what to do with their country. But what happens is when we have appointed senators, they don't represent the yellow shirts, they don't represent the red shirts, they don't represent anyone because nobody elects them into office. The same goes with uh, similar other dangerous provisions. For example, the courts are now able to decide whether to kick politicians out of office uh, on the mere grounds of ethical standards, which is uh, something we have to, to look out for. What exactly are these ethical standards? As a lawyer, I can say that something is right, something is wrong, if you judge it by the standard of law. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you talk about subjective ethics, uh, a man is good in one eye, a man is bad in another person's eyes. So I think, um, in the end, the political conflicts will be there. The problem is this draft constitution doesn't seem to realize that by creating this unrepresented system, it will endanger okay. uh, by creating more conflicts. Okay, let's just pause for a minute and take a closer look now at how we got to the current political crisis in Thailand. Uh, it all began back in 2006 when the military overthrew Prime Minister Taksin Shinawat, which was followed by a struggle between his supporters and opponents. Two of his successors were also dismissed, Prime Minister Samak Sundaravej by the Constitutional Court in 2008 and Prime Minister Somchai Wongsawat three months later. His 
is replaced by opposition leader Abhisit Vajajiva. Tens of thousands of pro-taxin supporters began protesting in mid-2010 in their trademark uh, red shirts. And in 2011, a pro-taxin party was returned to power. Taxin's sister, Yingluck, became prime minister. But her time in office was overshadowed by protests and fears that she was trying to bring back her brother. And as we've heard, Yingluck Shinawatra was also eventually forced out of office in 2014. And that's when the military took power. Let's bring back Ms. Honora Chit Sinai in Bangkok. Uh, what do you respond, sir, to those who say that this, in fact, is all about getting rid once and for all of Taksin and, and his party, that the ultimate objective here is to get rid of the old clique? Well, I've been drafting the Constitution with 20 of my other colleagues, and there has never been any discussion of trying to eliminate one party to, to reduce the number of seats for one party and, and, and uh, add seats to the other party. That is not what we were trying to do, and that is not what, what we have done. Uh, there has been talk, I just heard also again, of this uh, courts being able to kick out politicians just because of ethics. No. What we have said is for them, the parliament, the senators, and the independent bodies to get together and come up with a set of ethics. What the court will be ruling is whether people have, they have uh, contravened the law. That is still the, the, the duty of the court. Not that they have uh, committed any uh, wrongdoings and, mm. and under any uh, ethical oh. standards. No, that is okay. I, entirely different. Okay. We're trying to set up a better system. Okay, Verapat, do you agree that this is not about the political parties, that it's not about Taksin Shinawat? It's, it's very difficult to say. Uh, it's very difficult to deny that Taksin is not in the minds of the military junta. Let's take a very recent fresh example. It's, ha it's now uh, a top news in Thailand right now. The mere fact that Mr. Taksin uh, distributed what we call in Thailand a khan or a water holder mm -hmm. uh, for, for Thai people to celebrate a water festival. Uh, some people got arrested merely because uh, he received this khan or this water holder uh, from Mr. Taksin. So there's a paranoid and, and sense of insecurity mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Sakshin Shinawatra's popularity among the Thai people. And, and that's exactly the point I'm trying to make here, is that if you want to fight someone like Taksin, you need to bring people on your side. But what the current draft constitution is trying to do is to subject people to unelected bodies, unelected, unrepresentative systems. And naturally, those people would defy those, and, uh, those undemocratic ruling by siding with elected politicians and in the end, it increases the popularity of Mr. Taksin Shinawatra in the end. Sunai Pasuk in, in Bangkok, Thailand used to be a beacon of democracy in Southeast Asia. What went wrong in your view and how can it be fixed? Well, everything that has happened uh, in the lead up to the military coup and then, you know, after the military coup has rolled back gains in democratization that Thailand has achieved over the past decades. And, and, and with that, Thailand is no longer a role model for other countries in Southeast Asia. In fact, you know, when we talk to uh, politicians, activists in other countries in Asia, and they said, well, at least the situation is not as bad as Thailand right now. That, that shows you know, how far Thailand has sunk. And at this point, we can say that you know, the, the constitution inevitably will lead to further erosion of respect for democratic principle and respect for human rights in Thailand. What should be done, you know, uh, we discussed that, is to provide clarity. What if people reject the draft constitution? Mm -hmm. What if people can vote freely, can make their decision freely, and choose to reject the constitution? The junta and the constitution drafter need to provide clarity. What will then be their option? And we suggest that there are constitution, the previous constitution uh, was based on the will of the people. How about use that constitution as the basis and then amend some clause to ensure even more respect for democratic principle, even okay. more 
participation of the people and then assurance for respect for human rights, those should be a new starting point instead of sticking to this controversial draft constitution, okay. which will lead Thailand to, to nowhere but further deepening of dictatorship. Okay, thank you so very much. We're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately. Thank you for a very interesting discussion. We'll continue, of course, to follow all the developments uh, on Thailand here on Al Jazeera. Thank you, Sunai Pasuk, Verapat Pariawong, and Norachit Sinsehaseni. And thank you as well for watching. As always, you can watch this program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Fully Batibo, and the whole team, thanks for watching. Bye for now.